this is Rick with Cybermedics, and we're here today to talk about the Echo B5 Pro Home Thermostat. In particular, we'll be exploring the online account. So we'll log into the account and we'll show you how to navigate that and the settings that you can control once you're logged into your account. Over here on the left is the thermostat setting. You can click and drag this. And if you have this preference set here, it'll pop up and ask you how long do you want to change it to four until I'm home or until I change it again. Right here under quick changes, let's say you were going to go away all of a sudden and you just wanted to hit the away button. You could say away and hold and it would change to the away comfort setting. We'll detail what those are in a little bit. Underneath that is the settings. You can select the time 12 or 24 hours. The location can only be changed on the app on the cell phone. Preferences here are the temperature display Celsius or Fahrenheit. You have the heat set range anywhere from 45 to 90. You can change the cool set range from 63 to 94. Hold action. This is what we just showed earlier in the video. If you have this decide at time of change, then that's what it'll do. It'll pop up and you can make the choice or you can set it for a mandatory four hours, two hours, or until the next scheduled activity. So you can change that here. Thermostat name is what you're going to use when you program it with your smart speaker system. So you have some choices here, or you can do a custom name. Underneath of that, you have smart recovery heat mode. Based on your comfort settings of home, away, or sleep, let's say you're away and you want the temperature to be 78 when you get home, it'll anticipate that and get that temperature to up to 78 before you arrive. If you disable that, it'll just kick on at the scheduled regular scheduled time. And the same thing for the smart recovery cool mode. Over here, you have access control. You can enable that. You have some granularity of control. You can say all, or you can just say, I want to control access to the temperature schedule. So if you enable that, you enter a four digit code here and you can set it. Underneath of that, there's property characteristics. This is good for the energy analytics that B can perform on your system. If you plan on using that, then you'll want to fill this out. So the building style is the first thing here. So you have different buildings, apartment, condominium, townhouse, etc. Tell it the building size in square feet, number of floors, number of bedrooms, number of full-time occupants, age of the building. Underneath that is the reset schedule and preferences. So we'll close out of the settings. Now we'll come up here to reminders and alerts. There are no reminders, alerts, and here are preferences. So you can have it send you email alerts based upon what you've set up here. You have an HVAC maintenance reminder, enabled or disabled, how many months you want to be reminded, and when was the date of the last service. You can have it scheduled to tell you when to change your furnace filter. I think that's an awesome capability. I was always forgetting as to when was the last time I changed a filter. If you have a UV lamp, you can set a reminder for that. This is important if you live in a cold climate, especially if you have a low temperature at your home and you're away, you can be notified on that if you have this enabled. Same thing for high temperature alert. If you're away and your house gets particularly hot, you can have it send you a, an alert. You have a low humidity alert and also a high humidity alert. We have that set for 60. That's what they normally recommend. So we get out of that. Now we have the vacation mode. If you know that you're going to be leaving the premises for a duration of time, you can set the departure time and date here. What time you'll be leaving. Your return date and time down here at the bottom. And the heat and cooling temperatures. 
So heat on or off, cool on or off, and the fan, how long you want the fan to run, minimum set time. All right, so we'll cancel out of that. Now we'll come down here to this little weather box and this will show you the local weather for your unit. You set this up when you first set up your thermostat. Close that. This is Alexa voice control. We'll do a subsequent video on that. Set up your Alexa voice control here. It also is compatible with Siri. They've said it's compatible with the Google speaker system too, but we'll find out. Next thing we'll look at is this system setting here. This just basically is whether you want it in heat mode, cool, auto, or off. You also have a fan setting. You can set the minimum runtime of the fan. They normally recommend that to be about five minutes. You have the dehumidifier function. You can turn on or off. They normally recommend 60% for the... Oh, that's interesting. This says recommend 70% here. On the thermostat, it said recommend 60%. So this setting here, recommendation is different than what's on the thermostat. So we'll leave it at 60 and go to the home IQ. We may do a subsequent video on this. I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of this. This has not been installed for over a month, so it doesn't have this efficiency report, but you can come down here and go to the system monitor. So you can slide this around and you can see over here on the right, it's changing as to whether it's in cool mode, what the fan is doing, shows you a temperature graph over here. And here's a color code, indoor temperature, the outdoor temperature, the desired cooling temperature, and it graphs those. So the schedule down here shows you your comfort settings, your home, your away. So when you're away, sleep, and graphs the temperature there. The follow me over here are the sensors, the two sensors that we have, thermostat and office. So they're color coded. A lot of detail here. Like I said, we're just doing a quick overview. So as you slide this, you change the date and the time, and it shows you what's going on with those, those sensors. Weather impact is gonna show the outside weather compared to the usage. So down along the bottom here is the calendar date. The grade in icons are weekends. So that's the weekend set so that you know that's the weekend. Here it shows how for that particular day, how much it was running, your system was running in the cooling setting. You can also download the data. If you download the data, you're gonna get a spreadsheet in the CSV format. This is what it's gonna look like. And it has all of these headings, heat temperature setting, thermostat temperature, humidity. Okay, so we'll close that. Now we'll come down here to the schedule. And over here on the right are the comfort settings. So all of the functions, the smart functions are based upon these three conditions. You're either away, or you're home, or you're sleeping. So you can individually pick these and change them. So when you're away, you can set the temperature settings for the heat and the cool. So you come over here. And for us, we set this for 82 for the cooling and 60 for the heat. Fan settings, again, probably just want that on auto. Um, notice this is all for the away mode, right? Occupancy, away, usually away. And the sensors. So what sensors do you want to monitor the temperature? You can just pick one or all, depending upon how you want your system monitored. So if you come down here to home, now you're on the home setting. You can set the temperature settings for that and say desired heat mode 70, 80. Fan settings, again, auto, occupancy, usually home. And then the sensors, what sensor 
sensors do you want to monitor while you're at home? And we come down here to sleep and temperature settings. Again, it's the same thing, fan settings. You change temperature. I usually like it a little cooler when we're sleeping. All right, so those are your three comfort settings. And then those comfort settings are scheduled through the week. So from Monday through Sunday, and you set those up like right here. If we click this, we can see that sleep is at 1130 is the start of sleep time. So if you hit that, it's not closing it. It's actually going to delete it. So it's a little bit confusing. So you don't hit the X, hit the cancel unless you really want to delete. So when you're setting up your schedule, let's say you have a work week. The easiest thing to do is set up one particular day. Let's use Thursday here as an example. So you've got your sleep time. And then you've got your wake time. It says home, but that means just means you woke up, right? 8 a.m. You leave at 9. You come home from work at 5. And then you're sleeping at 11.30. Well, the thing to do is you can just come over here and copy this activity. So Thursday, so we want, which day do you want to copy from? So we'll just say Thursday and we'll say next. And which days do you want to copy it to? Well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday and press save. And now you can see that that populated all of the days of the week with that same schedule. And then over here, you could customize your Sunday and Saturday days, depending upon what you do on it, or you could take them all off and just Decide how you want to set it as activities unfold for the weekend. Now, this is interesting here. You can add a new comfort setting. This is something that you cannot do on the thermostat. So if you want to add a comfort setting here and give it a different name, for depending upon what the activities in the house are going to be, let's say away, but the dogs are home, you know, whatever, you can change it. And then you can add that to your system so you would have additional comfort settings. So I'm just going to put in a test comfort setting. And now we can do desired heat, desired cool temperature, fan settings, occupancy, and you can say usually home, or we'll just say usually home, and then the sensors save. Now you have this new setting, new comfort setting that you can also use. Not something you can do on the thermostat interface, but you can do it on online. So close out of that. Next, we'll go into the sensors here. You can enable or disable those. Follow me just means it's going to allow the sensors to know whether the rooms are occupied or not. So we have two, it comes with two, the thermostat itself is a sensor and it comes with one extra sensor. And you can decide which of the comfort modes you want that sensor to monitor. Same thing for this one. So if you only wanted this sensor, if it was in the bedroom, you could come in here and you could say, I only want it to monitor when we're sleeping. Cancel out of that. And the only thing left on, on the online menu is the about, which shows your model, your firmware, serial number, and your My Contractor. Hope the video demonstration was helpful. Would be really interested in your usage of home thermostats, smart thermostats, how they have worked for you. Have they saved you money? Have you enjoyed the convenience of them? What other brands other than the Echo B have you had experience with? Please post any questions or comments below. Hit that subscribe button. We really need your support and have a great and wonderful automation day.